We're going to start writing quick vocabulary, less than five minutes, if you listen to double speed. The first word is manticore. It's a legendary animal with the head of a man, the body of a lion, and the tail of a dragon or a scorpion. I feel like that's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, examples of manticore. The recently unearthed Stella depicts a manticore and several other frightening and fantastic creatures. That is manticore, a legendary animal with the head of a man, the body of a lion, and the tail of a dragon or scorpion. So this comes from ancient Persian, which I just Whoa, think is super cool. I did not see that coming. The word was martia, which means man or mortal. Martia kvara, which is eater, like the, the man one eater. who consumes mortals. Oh, uh, the consumer of mortals sounds better. Yeah. Man better decor. than man eater, yeah. The consumer of mortals. Oh, that's it. I thought you had more. <laughs> well, no. Okay. <clears throat> the next word is delegate. It means to entrust to another, to appoint as one's representative, or to assign responsibility or authority. Example. He said the current board seems to delegate rather than take input and make decisions based on what the community wants. This is delegate. It's a verb. To entrust to another, to appoint as one's representative, to assign responsibility or authority. And the root of this word is uh, de means away, and legare is with a commission. So you're sending someone off with a commission. Ah. De legare. De legare. Delegate. De legare. The next word is grandiose. It's an adjective. It means characterized by affection of affectation of grandeur or splendor splendor or by absurd exaggeration or impressive because of uncommon largeness, largeness. scope effect or grandeur that's i love that uncommon Common largeness, largeness. <laughs> <laughs> so the committee eventually scaled back the most outlandish parts of its plan for the festival including a grandiose scheme to bring in live peacocks for the event and that is grandiose. It's an adjective characterized by affectation of grandeur or splendor or by absurd exaggeration. Impressive because of uncommon largeness, <laughs> scope, effect, or grandeur. So this was originally, this was originally an Italian word, grandioso. Oh, that, and it just means biggish. Biggish. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. The next word is bravado. Bravado is blustering. Swaggering conduct. That's great. <laughs> a pretense of bravery or the quality or state of being foolhardy. The quiet, reserved actor is primarily known for playing characters who radiate bravado and swagger. This is bravado. It's a noun. Blustering, swaggering conduct. A pretense of bravery. The quality or state of being foolhardy. So this comes from a Spanish word. So bravo is brave or bold, but then bravata. Oh, sorry, Italian. I, I'm reading different parts of this pair. <laughs> uh, so bravata is is coming from brave, but it means bragging or boasting. Okay. And so a person affecting braveness, I suppose, or yeah. pretending braveness pretending. With, with words, bra bravado. The next word is hard to pronounce. It's thim, thimble rig. Thimble rig. And that, oh, it's a verb. To thimble rig oh. is to cheat by trickery. It's to swindle by a trick in which a small ball or pea. Oh, this oh. apparently is the etymology. A small ball or pea is quickly shifted from under one to another of three small cups to fool the spectator guessing its location. Yeah. Uh, now it just seems so obvious. <laughs> I didn't know this word. Yeah. So thimble rigging the market was such an accepted practice. Some traders were even taunted for not stealing enough. So this is thimble rig. It's a verb to cheat by trickery, to swindle by a trick in which a small ball or pea is quickly shifted from under one to another of three small cups to fool the spectator guessing its location. 
And this word comes from uh, a thimble, which is the thing that you put over your thumb. Right. And thimble has the same root as thumb. You see the T-H-M-B in thimble and in thumb. Oh, that's it? Yep. <laughs> this is Thomas Hardy, Birds at Winter Nightfall. Around the house the flakes fly faster, and all the berries now are gone. From holly and cotton easter. Around the house the flakes fly faster, shedding indoors that crumb out caster we used to see upon the lawn. Around the house the flakes fly faster, and all the berries now are gone. As always, thanks for listening. We'd love it if you would leave us a review, share the podcast with uh, your fellow writers, and let them know about it. And uh, if you want to support us, check out one of our books.